Hi guys, welcome back. I've got this mad idea down the line. Ultimately, I want to be able to shoot the slugs through the sub 12 9015 out to 75 and then 100 yards. Hopefully, we can do it with the Zan slugs. I've been doing pretty well with these recently. Now, I've got three different barrels for the 9015. This one here is the standard factory 9015 barrel. This is a CZ S200 barrel, and this is a mid range Low the Wolfer barrel, which has got the tape on it so you can tell the difference. Externally, the two of these, the CZ and the Low, they look incredibly similar. I often get them mixed up, hence why the tape's on there. All three of these barrels have got slightly different twist rates as well. Now, conventional wisdom will tell us that the slower twist rate with the slugs will generate more power, or at least the slugs will go through it a little bit faster. The twist rate on the Anschutz is the slowest, the CZ is in the middle of the two, and then the Walther is the fastest. Now, the Walther has got one turn in 17.7 .7 inches of barrel, the CZ one turn in 18.5 inches of barrel, and the Anschutz one turn in 18.8 .8 inches of barrel. So the two of these are very similar on paper. However, between all three of these, despite the twist rate differences, there's also a massive difference in the choke profile as well. The 9015 is a very delicate choke. So from the tip of the barrel back, this has a section around three quarters of an inch long that's choked, and it has a very delicate choke. The CZ barrel in the middle here, that's got the longest choke section of the lot. This has got almost two inches of choke section. It's a very tight choke. And then split the difference, the Walther up here has around an inch and a quarter of choke from the tip back and this has a mid choke so when you're rodding your slugs through it this one's not as tight anywhere nearly as tight as the cz and it's just a little bit more restrictive than the 9015 barrel so plan is i'm going to shoot them one after the other probably start with the 9015 barrel probably just 25 yards it's a little bit breezy out there but we can tuck ourselves out of the wind a little bit we'll see how they go it's going to certainly be interesting to compare the different barrels one after the other with the same ammo in the same action once we've picked the best one then going forward that's the one that I'm going to use for further testing when we start pushing these out to range. So hopefully we can get some decent groups out of these today. I'm going to get some targets drawn up and I'll see you at the farm. Right, we're here. Same setup as before then when we we're testing the shorts. 9015, we've got the 9015 standard barrel at the moment. Bipod on at the front, monopod at the back. Optus and CP, we're shooting on 12 mag. And then we've just got the first target out down here. Right, I've just got myself 15 of the little Zans. These are the 10 grain Zans in a pellet lid here. I've noticed something interesting about these Zans. I took some out of the packet a little while ago to do a thumbnail for any other videos, and they were only in the palm of my hand for seconds. Took a picture with them, didn't put them back into the plastic bag. They just sat in the little box, and they are terrible. They're all manky, they've all got a scale on them, they've all gone off already. So hopefully these ones are fresh out of the bag, but because they've got a high lead content, you really want to make sure you don't handle these as much as you possibly can. I haven't touched these, I've tipped them straight from the bag into the tin. I definitely, if I've handled these, won't be putting them back into the fresh bag. So it's just something to be aware of, especially with pellets and slugs that have got a very high lead content. So first off, we're just going to get a few run through at 25 yards and see how they go. OK, so it's coming about the same elevation for that first one as the little um, JSB shorts, a little bit to the left. But we have got a bit of cheeky wind coming across at the moment. I just gave the barrel a quick pull through, didn't give it a thorough clean just to pull out any bits that were left in there from shooting the pellet. So it might just take a few just to bring it back on again. But through my testing so far, if you've been shooting JSBs or a soft lead pellet first, not a bad idea just to give it a gentle clean and it won't take quite so many slugs then to bring it back on, especially if your slugs are more expensive, probably better to lead it in with some of the cheaper ammo. Doesn't seem to make much difference. These slugs make a big old hole in that paper. You can hear they make a big old thud when they hit that lead lining. Right, well now we've got six through it. They're looking like they're going through the same hole. So I'm going to move up onto the top bigger crosshairs, go and get the GoPro on and hopefully we can do some decent groups for those. Right, GoPro's on down the end now. We're going to go up onto the three bigger crosshairs at the top there and see what happens. Now bear in mind this wind is coming through at about one o'clock. We've got a little bit of shelter. Don't forget, I'm not aiming off. I'm just offering up my crosshairs on the scope to the crosshairs on the target. Perfectly down the center line. Not bad at all. Got the GoPro on as well. So hopefully we can do a couple of small groups in each of these crosses. Strangely, that one went up a bit higher. Okay, that's annoying. 
not too bad, not amazing. This particular new fresh batch of these Zans that I've got actually feels a little bit tighter to load in the barrel than the last lot. It seems like there's quite a lot of inconsistencies between the batches of the slugs and of course you haven't got the luxury of buying and by batch codes or anything like that that you have with your pellets in most cases so always a bit of a lottery at the moment. Okay so it looks like the groups are still walking slightly that one came in just above the crosshairs. Okay, so I'm just going to move on to the left-hand crosshair of the three. So, so far these groups are a little bit scattered. Not quite as good as the last batch of these that I had. But I'm not aiming off for the wind. I'm not making any allowances for that. But at the moment, the wind's fairly still. Now I've shot these before, I've shot quite a lot of the Zan slugs through this particular barrel already so I'm quite familiar with how it's going. This batch feels a little bit tighter in the barrel than the last batch that I've had. The last batch we're already doing slightly better than this particular batch. The wind that we've got at the moment's not really enough to scatter these groups like they are. They're still quite small, I mean most of those are probably, we've got probably three slugs, four slugs widths across the group so certainly not a bad group. But I think the next thing that I'm going to do now then is swap over to one of the others. Um, probably the CZ barrel next, I think. We'll do that. We'll get that set up. Fresh card out. Right, so I've just been inspecting that card. I've got you in the shade here. So that looks rubbish because the card is absolutely shredded. But when you look at these little holes here, as we're shooting shots, you think, oh, that's rubbish. We've got one up here, look, two here. Little bit of elevation change there. A little bit of windage change here. These, most of those three are on top of each other. And if we look in the old pellet trap, it's really interesting when you see, look at the actual heads that they've splayed all the way back. You can see that there's a real big deformation on those. However, you look at them, there's three slugs in there. That's that bottom left target. And that is my little fingernail. So that's probably, you probably get an eight mil. Yeah, that's probably eight mil outside edge to outside edge. Up the top here, those three. Yeah, that's a little clover leaf group. Look, they're all stacked on top of each other. So. Certainly not as bad as you would have thought by looking at that paper. Great big hole here. Them slugs have just drilled straight through and they've deformed massively inside the lead. It's actually pushing the lead, it's actually pushing the lead off of the back of the tray. So they're absolutely smashing it. Um, anyway, I'm gonna swap over to the other barrels. We'll try them at 25 yards. I mean, this barrel has done better with the previous batches of Zans at this range. So I can see straight away that these ones aren't gonna be doing quite as well at 45 and even further. So of course the, ultimate goal is to take this out to 75 and 100 yards hopefully one of the other barrels will perform slightly better than these at 25. right so so far this just about sums up most of my experience shooting slugs at the moment some days it goes absolutely to plan especially on camera it doesn't seem to very often so i've shot another card off of camera still not brilliant not bad certainly good enough for pest control at this sort of distance i mean that expansion of them slugs in that lead is incredible but certainly not going to be good enough if we want to push these out to 75 and 100 yards. I've shot better groups with previous batches of the Zans. So I've swapped over now. We've got the CZ barrel in here. This has just been cleaned. I cleaned it a little while ago. So we're probably going to need to run a few more slugs through it to see if we can bring it on song. The CZ and the Walther barrel, both of these, the point of impact is going to be quite a way off of the point of aim compared to the Anschutz barrel. So... Don't worry about where they land to start with relative to the crosshair on the target. We're just going to be monitoring the effective group sizes. It's frustrating because I've done so much better already with previous batches with these Zans. And of course, we don't have the luxury of buying slugs by batch code like we do the JSB pellets. Damn, they didn't half hit that lead backstop hard. They feel even tighter in this barrel. Right, so the first four of those, we've got a fairly scattered group of maybe three quarters of an inch, whereas the first and the fourth ones I've shot have gone back through the same hole. So I'm going to do four in each of these crosshairs out here. By the time we've done that, then we'll probably get another card out and see what we look like. These groups are walking around a little bit. You'll get one that scatters, then it'll move slightly, then the next one will go through the same hole. So. You can see they're leading in, just getting themselves settled into the barrel. All right, they've tightened up marginally. We're going to go over to the next one now. All 
Right, I'm just going to make a scope adjustment to go up onto the top row. They're coming in low and right, so I'm just going to bring them up a little bit. <laughs> Honestly, when you're filming, it's so distracting. I adjusted my scope the wrong way then. So that one on the top left card that pulled right over to the right hand side was me just being a numpty. Adjusted it back the right way, gone bang through the centre of the cross. It's a lot harder to film yourself than you imagine it is. Well, certainly harder than I imagined it would be. Right, okay, so <laughs> they have adjusted the scope back. The two of those have gone straight through the same hole. Hopefully, that means that we're starting to get it leaded in and that's where it will stay. And that one went up a little bit higher. Right, that one's banged through the crosshairs. They definitely seem to be walking about these groups a little bit still. So like, same as last time, they look like they're coming on song and then you get one that skews off a few pellet widths one way or the other. But on this last one, to so the top right of these crosshairs, both of those are through the same hole, look to be quite a tight little group. Okay, that one's gone through the same hole. Watch that one all the way down. Just gonna pick off that top left pellet strike where I adjusted my scope the wrong way. That's what I'm aiming at now. Right, so that's 25 through there at the moment. Them groups aren't great, but what I'm gonna do is get another card out, do it off film, and then we can um, see how they go and make a decision whether or not this barrel is gonna stay in there. So I'll catch up with you in a bit. Really, at absolute worst, if we're gonna take these out to 100 yards, we need these doing tighter groups than the other ones where we really want them pretty much stacked on top of each other at 25, especially in these conditions. Like I say, the wind has picked up now. It's coming over about one o'clock. We're relatively sheltered down here, so if you start shooting at 75 and 100 yards in the open, you need to be really, really careful with your ammo selection, or in this case, the barrel selection for the ammo you've got. So we'll see. Well, that was a promising start. That one actually felt a bit nicer to load than it has in the other previous barrels. All right, so that's gone low and right. As I've mentioned before, the point of impact between all of these barrels is quite different because of the way that they fit in the breech block. but. We're not worried about that too much for the moment. We just want to actually see if we can establish some groups. Okay, so the first two of those are pretty much touching. They do feel nicer to load into this barrel. Right, so the groups are actually a group. They're not as bad as the other barrels so far. So what I'm gonna do is just bring that back onto the crosshairs a little bit more for the lower row, and we'll see what happens. Right, these are actually starting to tighten up in here. They definitely feel a bit smoother loading in the barrel. Presumably the bore on this is not quite as tight as it is the other two. Right, I've just made a scope adjustment. That's pulled back on, so I've got three more crosses at the bottom of the card. That one's gone straight through the crosshair. Let's hope that we can get some, oh, let's hope that we can get some sense out of these slugs because otherwise it's going to be a waste of time. Better but still not great. I'm going to go and grab that card in. I think I might go and grab a cup of tea and come back to this, get another card out. But at the moment, this is super frustrating. Bummer. Oh, Right, we're back. So then the results were a little bit disappointing, to be honest. I'm pretty sure that this batch of Zans certainly isn't the best that I've had so far. Each of these barrels independently on different days through last summer shot better with a different batch of these. However, on the day, the CZ shot the worst groups. It started off a little bit scattered, as you'd expect. They seemed to lead in and then it seemed to go back off quickly again. I bet if we pulled this through that towards the choke section here is going to be full of lead shavings. So we did shoot a few decent groups. There's a few here, especially where I missed the old scope adjustment. I turned it the wrong way where I wasn't paying attention. It wasn't too bad, but for every decent group, then you'd still get a scattered one. The firing cycle was also quite abrupt on this. It didn't feel anywhere nearly as smooth as it did with the Walther or the Anschutz barrel. So it didn't do too great, unfortunately. So we certainly won't be using that to go out any further for the meantime. Right, so there's the Walther cards. They were all slightly better than the CZ. 
even its first ones as it was leading in, a little bit scattered, and then they started to get tighter. This was the first card, actually, so the first lot weren't too bad. I mean, some of those, again, you've got three in there, size of a pencil tip, that's eight mil, so not too bad at all. I would have liked to have done a little bit better, actually, given the conditions. When I shot this, the conditions, I mean, were a little bit blustery, but if we're going to think about pushing them further out, we need to be doing a little bit better than this. So not bad, but not quite as good as the 9015 barrel. Now, the main differences between the 9015 barrel and the others, the 9015 barrel has the slowest twist rate and it also has the most delicate choke. Now, this was the card that I actually shot. It's not on film because I'd forgot to put the GoPro on, but this was the first card, a bit scattered after shooting the little um, JSB shorts the other day. And then it starts to come on as it always does after sort of 2025. And the group's got progressively tighter. I mean, this bottom left one here... You've got three in there on the crosshairs, bang on the zero, no weird wandering once it had zeroed. I was really quite happy with that. So that's the barrel that we're going to use going forward. I also think it'll be a good experiment to take the Walther barrel and give that a really serious polish inside and see if we can make that improve a little bit, see if it improves with this, what I reckon are a fairly poor batch of Zans at the moment. So this just about sums up the majority of my slug shooting at the moment. There seems to be quite a bit of inconsistencies in the batches. Now, why do I say that? These barrels, I'm loading the slugs directly into the rifle, and you can feel if there's any restriction loading them in. So if the slug's larger, it's much harder to load into the barrel, and you can feel that, and you can see it as well. So it was actually a struggle to load these slugs into the CZ barrel and get them flush with the lead-in. So definitely some inconsistencies in the slugs and as i've said that pretty much sums up the majority of my slug shooting for every really good day you get a frustrating day when you change batches and of course we haven't got the luxury of being able to buy these by batch code or anything like that you just buy your slug so if you are interested in slug testing i'll tell you this now do try and stick with it because even if you haven't got a multitude of barrels and different actions and things like that you may well find that the batch you've got isn't great Try and swap some of a mate, something like that. Don't necessarily go and spend out. Get down the club, try and borrow some off of a mate. Well, don't borrow them because you can't really give them back, but see if you can blag some off of a mate to try because there's a very good chance that one batch will perform, whereas another won't. So it's worth sticking with because when they are on song, in most cases now, certainly at the longer ranges, and when you're looking for a slug or a pellet that expands, the expansion of these slugs is incredible. Seeing how they hit that lead backstop and actually opened right up and looked like a flower where the nose had gone all the way back, incredible you'd also saw down into the lead where a few of them had hit on top of each other they would drilled straight into that lead and they've actually opened up a big cavern underneath so massive penetration power and the expansion is surprisingly good in fact i've never seen anything that expands quite like these zans so all in all a bit of a frustrating test but going forward we're going to be using the 9015 barrel with this particular batch of zans and then hopefully the next time you see this combo together Get a new bigger scope on there and we're going to try out a 75 yards. We might have to give it a month or two for a spring morning. Generally, that's when the weather conditions are a little bit better for the longer range shooting with an air gun. So that'll do it for this one, guys. I will catch you in the next one.